Hi everyone, it's Lindenherz. Yeah, I'm not sure how to approach this video because I'm um, still waiting for a book to arrive um, because um, this little gorgeous, no, not so little actually, it's big bigger than usual, um, um, yeah, cards. Um, this gorgeous tarot here um, has a companion book, uh, sadly only in German. Um, this tarot book um, is uh, was written by yeah is written by um, Margaret Peterson herself or, or Margarete Peterson herself. This um, book was published um, I guess almost ten years after this one was released, and um, I'm quite uh, I'm quite eager to look at it. I know that this book isn't so much, um, yeah, you can't think of this uh, companion book so much, uh, um, yeah, as a regular companion book, which you normally get with tarot decks. Uh, it is also a bit in the style of this little white book that comes with the deck, and uh, it's more kind of poetic and... Um, all sorts of things, I guess. I'm not quite sure. This is what I read so far, uh, review-wise. Um, um, that this is more um, kind of a magical approach, maybe poetic approach to towards her own deck, towards her art. Um, and I also heard about this deck, that this deck isn't so much a deck to read for clients or for other people. That this could be, or this is the thing that I think about it, could be a deck for path working, especially for path working or meditation or so. And I read uh, something um, from the Little White Book um, because um, this is the English version. And it comes with the English Little White Book. And I was able to take a look at the um, German Little White Book because it's also a German publisher, actually. Um, yeah, it's a German publisher, although it's uh, printed in Belgium. Um, and this German publisher did this in, like you see here, in uh, in English. The, um, the German version is in a different kind of, um, yeah, little... Uh, package. It comes in a purple package, I guess, and it's quite expensive when you try to get your hands on it. But uh, funnily, um, the publisher um, did, um, yeah, did upload the uh, little white book in German for free on their website, and so I was able to take a look at it. And um, each of the cards um, are not necessarily represented by uh, explanational words or so in this deck but um, with poems. And I was so intrigued by the poems, I thought, okay, uh, maybe I just have to get the deck. And uh, I also found uh, someone, I'm not sure how this person got to this, but someone on um, on DeviantArt, this uh, art platform, uh, on this online platform, um, uploaded the... Um, the paintings of uh, Margarete Petersen, maybe just to pictures or scan the cards, I'm not quite sure, but you can take a closer look at those uh, paintings there also. Um, the only thing is you can't see which uh, card is which, you see only the paintings and no, uh, not the uh, um, which card it is. Some cards you can guess, but not every card. So, enough ramble about this. Let's start to unwrap it because this deck is already, I got it already yesterday and I hoped for the book to arrive, but uh, I guess I will have to wait a bit longer. So this video will, will be a two-part video. Maybe I will attach it at the end. This depends on how long I will take with this one. But uh, I'm sure uh, this book could be also quite interesting. Sadly, only in German, like I told you, so um, only for people who can speak German. But I can, uh, at least I can share with you some of the wisdom that is in there. Maybe give, give some um, um, yeah, tips how to use the cards, maybe uh, from the poetic point of view of Margarete Petersen in her book. Um, I will be able to give some suggestions how you could work with this deck. So, like I told you, this is still avail available. Um, I got it on from Amazon. Uh, I'm not sure uh, how much it is on 
um, and how easy it is to get on Amazon.com. Uh, uh, there you have to search for it, but I guess it shouldn't be that problematic because, yeah, this is a new deck. So, um, at least, yeah, not, I don't see any, um, any, um, uh, printing date or so on it, but, um, it should be still available. I will see if I can find some uh, information about it on Amazon and I will put it in either in the description box below or in um, in the second part of this video or the next video. So this is um yeah usual uh, thing here. Oh, um, and before I forget it, uh, this is... Uh, I have to thank about... <laughs> Uh, from Where Elders Whisper uh, for this purchase. Um, it's all your fault, Bart. <laughs> um, he made a little uh, video uh, where he unpacked some of his uh, recent tarot goodies he purchased and this was with it. And I was quite intrigued by it because I thought, okay, uh, this looks interesting. I have to research it. And then I found a lot of things about it and also found out this is uh, this is a uh, German artist, and I thought, oh my gosh, I missed so much. And this is the thing that I also um, found out um, within the last few weeks that up until I guess um, ten, twelve, or maybe fifteen years ago, there was still a bit more variety on the German tarot market, tarot market uh, than now. Um, this uh, publisher published a lot more uh, tarot decks than, um, yeah, than this publisher uh, does nowadays. And um, I'm a bit sad, <laughs> but at the same time also quite happy to be able to get my hands on older decks, sometimes for a very, very reasonable price. I recently purchased the Roots of Asia Tarot, or the Wurzeln Asiens Tarot, <laughs> um, uh, from someone privately who had, had this deck and uh, yeah um, it was it was still in his wrapping inside but the box was a bit uh, worn but no problem it was so so reasonable in price and I know that the Roots of Asia tarot uh, is quite uh, pricey uh, when you try to get it in English so yeah let's delve into this one. Oh, look at that Look at the back. Ooh, very colorful. So, both wrapped in. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at the fool. I heard from this card, uh, from these cards, that um, especially the um, the minor arcana is quite abstract. And um, yeah, this deck is also referred as an art deck. Mm, and um, that the interpretation of the miners is quite interesting when you spend some, you have to spend some time with this, with the cards. And uh, sometimes also uh, can, uh, it can reveal a lot more things when you try to look at a different angle on the cards. This is what I read on uh, Eclectic Tarot. I guess it was not an Eclectic Tarot. So let's see if I can open this without making a mess. Ah, as always, I don't do what I want to do. <laughs> I guess I will have to take a pair of little scissors. So now it's easier. <laughs> the funny thing is that the guidebook is in the middle. <laughs> this is something I never saw before. <laughs> you see? There is the guidebook. Okay, the camera won't focus there. You see it. So, let's get the guidebook out of this. Oh, color. This is a fairly large deck. And the cardstock is not the best, to be honest. But I heard this before. Also, Bart uh, said that this is not the best of cardstock. It's very flimsy. Yeah. I'm not quite sure what um, there is another cardstock where I was really disappointed um, from the. But to be honest, this is better than this one. So 
maybe you have this um, Brian Froud's Fairies Oracle and you know the cardstock and this is a bit better here in terms of feeling this other one feels a bit cheap to be honest but this one here is okay for that so these are the cards I try to make it quicker than normal <laughs> I try so this is the English guidebook and the interesting thing is that the foreword is by Luisa Francia or Francia, Francia, I don't know. Um, she is a German witch, so to speak. Um, a woman that is highly um, engaged into women's spirituality and she has published a lot, a lot of books here in, German, uh, in Germany. And um, the most books are only available in German. Sadly, because there are so much interesting things that also uh, the English speak speaking market could yeah, benefit from. However, um, I'm not sure she had, um, she had, uh, or she has, I'm not sure. She has a website which is mm, in some parts too lang uh, bilingual or bilingual, uh, two languages in German and in English. And there you can also sometimes read about her poems that she is writing. And I had a very intriguing book by her, which is called, which you would translate into the, the Feathered Goddess, which is about, um, about uh, Germanic goddesses and, uh, yeah, female spirituality during the Germanic times. So this is her approach. Of course, you can't know this for sure because, yeah, there are only the things um, you can read about the Germanic people which were written down by the Romans. So um, this is a lot of guesswork, I think. I'm not quite sure, but still, it is a very interesting book in her approach to to this to these goddesses. And yeah, so enough of that. But she wrote the foreword. Okay, you can bit, read a bit about the artist. In her own ingenious way, Marguerite Peterson has created and lived the tarot cards since 1979. Um, after living in Bavaria and the Italian part of Switzerland, she returned to Berlin, where she has been living for several years now. So from what I heard is that this deck was created within a lot of years. So... I guess from the beginning of, as you can see here, 1979. So it is quite a long journey. So and um, um, from what I, from what you can read here is that Luisa Francia uh, um, was known to her, uh, to Marguerite Peterson, that she that both women know each other, and yeah, she talks about this. Quite interesting uh, thing. I still have to read it. So let's delve a bit. Here's the introduction, which is, I guess, from Margaret Peterson herself. And then you can see it here. Uh, so um, where she talks a bit about um, her, yeah, her path with the uh, Major Arcana and so on and so forth. And um, here you can see one of the poems. And this is quite stunning. You are, so try to look at this first card. You are young and far away from home. A glittering crack, heaven, sun and clouds, and foaming waters, the elements at play. Blue breath, risk finding the way to yourself. Engage yourself where chaos begins. Where you stand alone and without help facing life. This is really gorgeous. Try to focus because there are so many details. The interesting uh, interesting thing, I still have the, the, the TH problem, <laughs> as a lot of Germans have. <laughs> um, the intriguing thing is that um, the book that uh, will arrive at my doorstep hopefully very soon has also bigger depictions in color of the cars. So I'm quite interested to look at that um but you see here this is these clashing waves and the sun is there okay not necessarily a white dog as you can see there is a bird which looks a bit like a white eagle or so and i'm not sure if the fool has something in 
in his hand. I tried to figure it out off camera. I guess it looks like it, uh, he has also uh, a flower in his hand. But it's not quite clear. <laughs> it looks quite interesting. <laughs> Shot before and the eagle tries to yeah, hinder him. Yeah, so um, as you see, here are a lot of poems inside. So you can see here for magic in terms of the magician, which is quite interesting. And I think, I really think uh, that this is a in really intriguing way to depict um, uh, depict a tarot card in, in capture it in poems. Because sometimes, I guess at least, or when I read it in German, it was uh, something like capturing the essence of the card within these words, even more so than if you would read a, um, a usual uh, guidebook on tarot cards. I'm not sure how to explain, but this is... Uh, ah, ah, sorry, this is really... Uh, I love this. I really love this. So, um, enough of that. I will flip through the cards. So here we have magic or the magician. Wow, the colors are really amazing. I can read a bit more about this, but um, not everything, although uh, otherwise the video will take too long. I try to make it uh, to 30 minutes and then we'll, I guess I will upload another one on the, car, uh, on the book. We will see. So we have here magic and it says here, Sun winds are stroking the strings of a sitar. The song of birds, the air is vibrating, pulsating. Through the mask, it sounds, I am. Soul glides into body, ever new self-creation, knowing the essence of the elements, fire, earth, air, water, the lively dance of sounds, remembering oneness, audible breath, I am. Wow. Hopefully I don't murder that poem. <laughs> This is gorgeous. This is gorgeous. Wow, look at that. Ooh. The colors are amazing. And you... Wow, look at that. This is really amazing. Look at that. You have the sword. And this looks like wands. This is also quite interesting. You have the fiery element and the watery element. You have an, a full moon. And this looks like a new moon. So moon phases. You have this... Yeah... Uh, moon here uh, at her bottom. This eye interest is interesting behind her. This is really just wow. And it says here, Isis, moon goddess, guardian of cosmic knowledge, lingering in the temple of et eternal change, visions born out of silence, mover of oceans and the red streams, black moon, white moon, Deeply inhaling, exhaling, ebb and tide, seeing without judging, mother of duality, sometimes creative, she opens her heart. This is, wow. This is really an interesting thing. Look at this. This looks certainly feminine. <laughs> this depiction here of the Empress. So I guess I will read the Empress and then I will stop reading it. Uh, the Empress. Mountains surround you, where grasses and trees grow, emptiness and fullness. To occupy a space, naked and upon, entering a new space, organic reality, a body that understands and speaks many languages. Devotion and creativity are born in the center of the heart, nurturing and nourishing, source of being. This is interesting. Oh, wow. Ah, this is, these are amazing cards, really stunning. The Emperor, you get, uh, certainly you get the sense of structure. This almost looks like bringing structure into chaos. And there's a lot of, these colors are so vibrant. This is, wow. Hierophant, look at that. This is interesting. It says the guidebook to the Hierophant. Uh, okay, I guess I oversaw it. Let's see. Knower of stars, priest, shaman, 
initiated into the movement of the planets and the wisdom of the serpent, guarding the keys to the realm of the unconscious. The gesture of your hand shows your calling, enlightened to choose the way of service, transforming suffering into knowing. We get to know the universe. A breath heralds your existence. Oh, yeah, this is... Oh. At first, I was a bit like, oh my gosh, I'm not quite sure if I uh, should purchase this uh, because I already purchased another very expensive deck. But, uh, oh, yeah, I don't regret it. <laughs> oh, this is interesting. This looks almost like a serpent within. Ah, oh, please... I just hope that the serpents, uh, the serpent thing is not, um, again, um, this is something I stumble quite a lot since I started uh, studying, studying, um, Lenormand, um, and having the Celtic Lenormand, um, for myself now, um, with the two, um, depictions of the snake. And, um, while I was reading the, the Lenormand book I have, uh, this German one, um, I read a lot about the snakes and how they are, yeah, there's misconceptions we have um, through the, yeah, Christianity, through the Christian church and so on and so forth, where it's always the, about the falsehood of snakes and I can't stand it, actually. I don't like it and I like more this thing about, um, or I think, yeah, it's about transformation for me. It's so it was a, it was a symbol of wisdom and also connecting death and life uh, with each other and um i don't like this christian approach to it to be honest and i had this issue recently with the prisma visions tarot and there is in one card no actually i guess in two cards the the devil card has also a snake in it but there was also a minor arcana card and i just interpret uh, yeah saw it in my way to speak it like this, um, I try to put my own approach towards the snake and not the, um, yeah, this is an evil creature and you have to be on your guard and so on and so forth. So let's see what's saying here. Saying here. Okay. Soul, nakedly looking into the mirror. Twilight, doubt, duality, double vision. <laughs> Thinking, listening, confusion. The release of identities, the shedding of old skin, meeting the non-I, a blossom opening. Inner forces become fluid, soft, supple, fresh vibrating energy moving up the spine, gently meeting beyond all opposites. You and I are becoming one. This is gorgeous, really. So luckily nothing at all about this bad depiction of the snake. It almost reminds me of the Kundalini in the yoga tradition, uh, this um, snake at the bottom of the base chakra, <laughs> which you can hear in the background is my dog who tries to get some attention. <laughs> Look at that. This is also interesting. And so vibrant. The colors are wow. They are, yeah, just wow. So this is an interesting deck and I'm not quite sure if you can't read with this deck also for others. To be honest, why not? Why not? Oh, justice is interesting. You see something here, this hand or so and something you're holding. Uh, okay, let's see what's saying here. Okay, this is Mart, goddess of justice, weighing the hearts. Ah, okay. A force daring to meet the shadows of the underworld. She who re uh, redless, oh, relentlessly examines the soul. Sprawled out before her, the karmic law of cause and effect. A lively process, lively process, ensuring balance. This is interesting. I'm, I'm quite sure the, the, the words here add a lot to this, to the pictures, in my opinion. Oh, look at that, the crone. Okay, what could the crone possibly be? Death card? I guess death? I'm not quite sure. Uh, there we have strength. So, so this was eight. Is nine death? I'm not sure at the moment, to be honest. 
I try to figure out if I have a um, tarot um, deck here to figure it out. So let's see. I have the Wild Unknown here next to me, so just see what we can get here. Where's death? I mean, death can, it could be, couldn't be death. Lovers, chariot, justice, the hermit? Could it be, okay, it could be the hermit. Not death. This is interesting. Okay, it could be the hermit, to be honest. <laughs> Hopefully the hermit. Yeah, it is the hermit. Okay, I see it here. Look at that here. We have this hermit. And you can see the size-wise if you have the... This is a lot bigger. This has almost the, the size of the Sacred Rebels Oracle or of an Oracle deck itself. Okay, this is interesting here. This is... Okay, the crown, uh, crown is uh, actually the hermit. Aging as spiritual journey. The soul listening inward through the ear labyrinth. Listening to the voice of your heart. Place of knowledge and wisdom. The old traveler on her way to the point of oneness. Where she touches the cosmic hole. Wingless flying straight into the heart. Every step is perfect. Wow. This is a lot of abstract things here going on. But with the poems together. <sighs> I'm not sure, um, but I get the impression these cards, I don't have them actually, the other ones. Um, these cards could work quite good with these soul cards. I'm not sure. And look at that, the Wheel of Life. This is interesting because you see when you look closely, there are faces. Here this more serene face or figure of, of a woman and this here in the downfall. This is gorgeous. Here we have strength, so strength is 11. It's quite, this is quite, um, yeah, you could see it quite uh, quite good here. The other ones were more uh, abstract than this one, which is also interesting here. It looks like the moon phases here a bit. And painted red, she dances in the center, surrounded by a subtle net of channels to her left and her right. Uh, okay, this is something I can't read. The Muldahara, which I guess is some something from the uh, from the yogic tradition. I'm not sure. The, in Muldahara, the spirit of fire lives in the midst of the flame, that it is nourishment. She is the creative moment, like a spark in the light. Her being here, a flowing, letting go of self. Oh, this adds a lot to. Oh, here, look at that. Whoa, 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 whoa. There's a lot going on here. Look at this here. These opponent forces here that are pulling on the fool. And we have here fire and water. This is, oh. Look at that. Look at his face. If you can see him. He looks quite okay. <laughs> With it. Wow. Here we have death. Wow, here. This is also interesting. These two snakes here, yin and yang. So like the snake from this world and the snake from the other world. This is quite interesting. Wow. Oh, look at that. Okay, Mediatrix. What she could be, possibly. What comes after death? Uh, okay, we have devil after that. Oh, I'm still bad. I'm not remembering <laughs> which card is which. So we had, what did we have? We had death. So let's see. La, 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 death. Temperance. Okay. I could have guessed it if I looked closely to the picture. Yeah. Okay. This is certainly uh, uh, teaching me some lessons. Just look at the picture and don't rely so much on words. Ah. So. Mediatrix is also quite interesting. You are fire and water, the cosmic mixer, it says here. And so on and so forth. I can't read it. I can't read everything to you. <laughs> the devil. Wow. This is interesting. Okay. There are certain uh, cards where you have to read. 
Confusion in the passionate flame, fears and desires, always the same questions and no answers, regarding the shadows in the mirror, rewinding of memories and emotions, captivating fantasy, only the voice of hunger and thirst can be heard. Thinking becomes impersonal, mechanical, predictable, beauty misused, separated from yourself, in the sharpened vision, at the point of brilliance, new perspectives open. Wow, it's certainly good, this companion book, to be honest. I knew there were some complaints about this when I read it, and um, um, some people uh, wanted a more usual companion book, but with this art, you can't, I, you can't, yeah, think about a usual companion book, to be honest, <laughs> to be brutally honest. It has to be a bit different. And it adds to that, to be honest, this looks also quite interesting, the tower. And like I said, this is really, this helps a lot, these uh, poems here. The roaring thunder of a mighty storm, thunder and lightning, the raging of elements, deep chasms opening up, opening up, no way to escape. Icy cold hailstorms and flaming rocks of lava, horrible screams of bodiless beings, nothing to hold on, nothing stays the way it was. Fiery breath, the psychic, the psychic stage of being emptied, separation from constricting patterns, a jump into the flare red sky. This is also interesting. Wow. And this and the star. Oh. Yeah, I know this video will take longer. <laughs> I have to make the, those cuts justice, to be honest. Ah, uh, no, I don't regret getting it. <laughs> so it's not your fault, but, but okay, you were uh, involved. But uh, thank you <laughs> for sharing it. Look at that. This is interesting. Oh, there comes my boyfriend. So uh, if you hear something in the background, this could be only my boyfriend who's coming now into the flat. And who has to know that I'm filming now? <clears throat> yeah. So let's see here. Um, there's a lot of interesting things going on here. Here, this bound figure is here, and here with the third eye. This is interesting. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. look at that, Kelly. No naked baby, no horse, no face in the sun. <laughs> Just bright colors. Yeah. You can feel the energy. You can feel the heat here. This is wow. Okay, renewal. This is this is interesting. This is uh, what comes after the sun. I'm so bad. I'm so bad. Uh, what comes after the sun? Judgment, rebirth, renewal. Yeah. Okay. I'm not sure why I can't get it today. <laughs> Renewal judgment, yeah, it's obviously. I guess I have to memorize all the card uh, or the orders of the cards. <clears throat> this is gorgeous. Look, so I have no idea where my camera threw me off. <laughs> so I just uh, start with uh, yeah, with this one here with judgment, which is renewal. And this one, and here we have the world card, which I really like. I like this dancing figure inside this lushness here yeah so now we come to these suits and now i try to separate them try to okay interesting there's an interesting organization here of the of the suits interesting so we have here the fire suit and I try to whoop they come here and try to remove those here you can see there's a little bend bend to the cards but okay that is this okay so let's see the as you can see here the suits are named in a different way so these are the Ace of Flames, or the the Suit of Flames. And so now I try to... Yeah, this is interesting kind of... Huh? Okay. 
It's interesting how they organize the um, the court cards here. So here we have Ace of Feathers. So let's see if we can get a bit more into the frame. It's not so easy here, but we let's see. So here we have. I put it here a bit in the over that. <laughs> Otherwise, yeah, there's no place here. And we have the. It is quite interesting in terms of the chords because uh, they organized the chords here. It starts with the mothers, the fathers, daughters, and sons. This is quite an interesting. <laughs> uh, this is quite interesting. And here we have the the Ace of Cups, which is quite interesting. We have here uh, flames. We have feathers and. The other two uh, suits are, yeah, stayed the same, which is quite interesting, actually. Hmm? Strange, a bit strange, but okay. So I know there is one that loves to start with the with the uh, <laughs> the air suit. So after this video will be epic long, I guess. So Ace of Feathers we have. Oh, this is also gorgeous. The two of swords or two of feathers. Now let's see what they say about the. Okay, the, there is a bit of a different um, kind of um, structure to. Let's see, it's a bit strange here. Okay, they they have um, a special section on the court cards, extra for that. And a bit of uh, explanation about the chords here. So we have this one here, this, and then it goes into the chords. As you can see here, a bit more. And not so much... Uh, so not so much in terms of uh, uh, poems or so, but a bit more. It's still poetic though, so... Then we go into the pip cards, and there is the organization here is uh, similar. So let's see the numbers. It goes also in the numbers. This comes interesting. This is really interesting. Uh, earth element. Let's see. Water element. We have the air. Air, air, air. Where is it? The last one here. <laughs> so what do they say about the two of feathers? Bring the stream of your thoughts to a stop. Observe your inner dialogue through meditation. Realize how chains of thoughts are formed and how they freeze into automatic thought patterns, doubting and pondering. Just for a moment, let your thoughts come to a still standstill. Feel the power of the space that lies between a dying and a newly forming thought. This is quite interesting. So the, um, the minors are actually... Um, um, yeah, um, the description of the miners are a bit more what you would expect from a normal uh, guidebook, actually. But still, also interesting, uh, yeah, intriguing poetically, and, and intriguingly poetic, and also um, um, food for thought. <laughs> so, three of feathers. Oh, look at that. This is also strong. And still, oh, I like this blue and this red, this contrast. Four of feathers. Oh, look at that. Do you see that? This piece of sleeping. It looks like Buddha a bit. Under the surface of this, this land. Wow. Oh, look at that. The fives. Oh, there is a lot of things going on here. Six of feathers. This is also interesting. Okay, what they say about the sixes here? The six of feathers. Uh, uh, it's not so easy to do this with one hand. Uh, come on, come on. Feathers. Six of feathers. Focusing different modes of thought. Networking. Changing. Uh, also, okay, no, just again. <laughs> Focusing different modes of thought. Networking, changing unproductive and self-sabotaging uh, sabotaging patterns of thinking. Be willing to learn from other people and to take in new information. 
an exchange of ideas. Networking is all about realizing our inter uh, interdependency. Perceive yourself to be part of an intricately interwoven system. Focus on different mental goals and connect them to new ways of thinking. Cultivate a harmonious relationship between your mind and your feelings. This is interesting. I'm not sure I could I, I could swear this uh, is an interesting deck. Uh, maybe also for, for Anneke uh, from Nobody's Here. Look at that. Here, look at this mask. This is some Asian uh, mask, I guess. This, this looks familiar to me. Oh, look at this. Ooh. Wow, uh, okay, I guess the nines were all about nightmares or so. This looks, uh, this looks a bit, uh, ooh. this looks certainly like a nightmare. And this is interesting. The ten of feathers are normally about endings and so. What do they say here about the uh, ten of feathers? This is looks really interesting. Stop the film. The fickle and shadowy thoughts have come to a rest. They have settled on tree branches and come down to earth. You have experienced fear and pain without being destroyed. You have experienced yourself as part of the film and as part of the screen. The choice is yours. You can always leave the realm of your nightmares. Put a stop to old patterns of thought by gaining mental clarity and applying the power of discernment. This is really... I'm really sure that you can read with this deck for others. I'm quite sure. Wow, look at that. This is the order you can see here. This starts with a mother of feathers. Okay, you could see they go backwards, but they first start with a mother, which is quite interesting. Mother of feathers. Look at this. This eye. Whoa. She sees all. <laughs> the father of feathers. This is also interesting. There is some movement going on. The daughter of feathers could be the the page of pentacle, uh, the page of of, uh, of um, swords. So we would see it like this. This is quite interesting because here is a lot more movement than uh, within the sun. So I would assume this one to be the uh, the page and this one the knight. So let's see what they say. Maybe they twisted it or so. I'm not quite sure. So what do they say about this? Okay. The traditional names of the court cards are Queen, King, Knight and Page or Knave, respectively King, uh, Queen, King, Prince and Princess. The court or personality cards can also be interpreted as family of elements, uh, families of elements. I choose the terms mother, father, daughter and son on purpose because we all are fam familiar with them. They constitute our mandala, our sphere. Even if our family is far away or if we wish them to be far away, we always carry um, a part of the family vibration within. On one hand, I use the term mother, father, daughter and son in a literal sense, but on the other hand, as a metaphor. A metaphor is a bridge. Sometimes you have to distance yourself and forget everything in order to find the bridge to yourself. The family is not everything, but it is part of the fabric from which we all are wo woven. The court cards occupy the space between the major and the minor arcana, while the major arcana connects us to the stories, myths and philosophies of mankind. The court or personality cards represent the social web. They are the mediators ensuring communication and, yeah, what you hear there in the background is my boyfriend in the kitchen. <laughs> um, exchange and so on and so forth. So what do they say about the cards here itself? So feathers. So daughter of feathers. Okay. This from the perspective of the daughter herself. So my mother gave the gift of space and mobility to me. My father gave me the ability to discern. My brother gave me awareness. Right brain hemisphere, male, left brain hemisphere, female. Okay, and so on and so forth. I'm dancing and jumping to and fro, steering everything up. I'm always moving and blowing the dust from rigid modes of thinking. I feed my old negative projections with movement. Nothing collects dust, nothing hardens and nothing becomes rigid. My mind is supple 
and soft as the wind, weightlessly focusing my thoughts, effortlessly reaching my goal. I jump from the specific to the abstract. I have left habitual post, uh, posturing behind and with every breath I experience myself anew, which is this one. So there's a lot of movement going on in this card, which is interesting because hmm, I'm not sure about that. What they say about the sun of feathers, my mom gave me a sharp sword to cut through fatal entanglements. My father gave me a compass and told me all about the winds from the east, south, west and north. My sister gave me the courage to jump into the unknown. My room is immaculate and painted snow white. So we have it here. Um, meditating in the lotus position. I'm so sure that this is... Okay. Hmm. Meditating uh, in the lotus position, I move from beta to alpha rhythm. Slowing down my pace, I move through history. I see the old warrior bathing in dragon's blood. He thought himself invulnerable, but he died by the spear of his shadow while he was drinking from the spring. Seeing the hero was robbed of his importance. Knowing I saw the image behind the image. Breathing, I experience things as they are. For my true self, considered into one point, everything is equally valid. Slipping through the uh, fine mesh of imagination, it dances unencumbered through space. So this is quite interesting and a um, different kind of approach. So I would certainly think of that as a, as a, as a knight and not the other way around. This is too still for me. So... Interesting, interesting, interesting. I have to wrap my head around that. <laughs> so, we have the Ace of Flames. The Two of Flames. This also is very abstract. I try to move it here more quickly, otherwise we will <laughs> stay here forever. The Five of Flames. Look at that. There is something going on here. Although, it looks here quite okay with it. Okay, okay, here's something going on. <laughs> yeah, so I wasn't prepared for that. Um, or should I have prepared you for that? <laughs> uh, what do they say here about the Six of Flames? There is something going on between those two, that's for sure. Uh, six of Flames, there we have it. Okay. Six of Flames. The fire of going beyond your limits and exp uh, expanding your boundaries. Dance, rhythm, movement and sexuality. The boundaries between not I and I are beginning to dissolve. Going beyond yourself, you will find a new unity. Jumping into another field of force with cat-like agility. Victory or triumph is being in the present moment with everything you feel, smell, taste, hear or see. And see. So this is, yeah. Okay, seven of flames. Look at that, there's a leopard. And here's some an archer. Eight of flames. Okay. So this is even more abstract, I guess. Here we have the mother. So let's see. Mother of flames, the father of flames. Oh, the Daughter of Flames. So again, okay, the sun looks, this time looks a bit more like movement. She's also moving, she's dancing, which looks really gorgeous. It looks a bit like, you see here, this one? Maybe this is taken from that. Okay, so this looks a bit more, um, a bit more fitting for a knight and page. So let's see for the cups. Oh, this is gorgeous here with the lotus. Two of cups. This looks quite good here. The, the two persons you feel facing each other. Three of cups. It looks like painting on a cave, a cave wall. Certainly some kind of dancing, which is fitting. Four of Cups, look at that. It looks almost like looking at the earth or so, with the ocean and the continents. Five of Cups. 
six. There is some more going on here. Okay, there's a face. Eight of cups. Nine of cups. Ten is gorgeous. Look at that. Ten of cups. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, the father. This is Buddha. Oh, look at that. This is gorgeous. Okay, here's also a bit more movement. Oh, no, I'm not quite dark. There, there, there is the movement. And there you see this lying Buddha figure underneath. So, deep into the waters, diving deep, going with the flow. Also, she here. This is also gorgeous. Yeah. Okay, I can get that. And finally, this is also an interesting shape here, looking going within. This reminds me a bit, yeah, this is certainly something feminine. <laughs> and we have, this looks again a bit like a snake. Oh, this reminds me a bit of the, of the Thoth. Uh, I guess it's also the two of coins of the Thoth, which is having this uh, snake kind uh, shape. This is interesting here. Ah, look at that, but the, the footprints, this is quite interesting. Three of coins. This is also interesting, okay. Wow. The five. The six. Seven of coins. Eight. Wow. This is interesting figure here. Nine. Oh, look at that with the labyrinth here. And ten of coins. Okay. Hmm. The mother of coins. The father. Ah, look at that. Those two here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, this was the Marguerite Peterson Tarot, Marguerite Peterson, and um, I will, I guess I will do another video, which will be, a, I guess, a second part. This could be uh, otherwise uh, too long uh, in general, so um, I will do another video when I will receive the uh, the book by her, which is called Narrensprünge, which could be translated into um, Leaps of the Fool, and um, yeah, um, We'll do, like I said, another video and we'll share with you what uh, she has to offer in this bigger um, book that accompanies her deck. So I hope uh, you enjoyed it so far and we will see us very soon. And I wish you a wonderful day or a peaceful night. Many blessings. Bye.